All right, welcome back, watch fans. We've got a special episode for you today. Uh, we're going to be going through uh, some of the most exciting auctions coming up, uh, which will kind of give you an insight into you know, what's really happening in the market. We'll go through some recent results, uh, and we're going to be focusing on modern as well as vintage and, uh, as they say, neo-vintage pieces. Uh, and of course, uh, joining me today is the Red Baron. Uh, Baron, welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. So before we, before we even get into it, I just want to highlight our new newsletter. Uh, this is a free newsletter uh, that is coming out every week. And uh, what you get in this free weekly letter, and you can sign up, just click the, the link in the uh, video description below. It's going to have all the watch market news, previews, results, latest prices, market action, insight, and uh, we're going to have curated deals. So this week, we're going to be actually having some interesting watches, including this uh, Patek uh, Perpetual Calendar, Perpe uh, Platinum, uh, which has, you know, it's got a, a story behind it, which we'll have to discuss later. Is it a good deal? Is it not a good deal? I mean, the price is very reasonable, but, you know, that's, that's some of the things that you're going to get each week in the newsletter, the Watch Reporter newsletter, again, latest market news, insight into what's happening in the top collector brands, Rolex, AP, Patek, Vacheron, uh, maybe even Breguet, possibly Omega, possibly Omega. Uh, okay, so with that said, click the link in the video description below to get uh, that, um, to access that newsletter. It's absolutely free for the moment. Uh, and let me just pull this off and let's uh, let's get into this week's news. So um, let's take a look. So, OK, so what we're covering a loop of this loop of this in case a lot of you guys don't know. This is a, a relatively new um, online auction. Uh, it's actually run by a couple of you know pretty serious dealers. It's uh, what is it? Uh, Eric uh, Quo. Uh, quote, quote, yeah, uh, and uh, Justin Grunberg from uh, the Keystone, uh, which uh, had you know, previously had a location in Beverly Hills. They had some incredible, incredible watches. Uh, I've come close to buying some from them at their store, including the famous, the famous Patek 3800, which I missed out on, uh, which was only 14 grand uh, in their shop today. That watch is 38 grand. So there you go. You. You miss some, you lose some. But anyway, so they got this really interesting auction. Um, and one of the things I like about it is, I guess the concept is loop this. You know, basically they have very high-res photos, you know, very uh, transparent. Uh, you, you know, they don't really hide anything here. Um, and, of course, listen, with all auctions, it's buyer beware. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, there's no returns. Uh, and uh, there is a 10% buyer's premium, but they have some... What I've found, they have some really interesting deals on um, stuff that's a little bit off the radar. So let, let's get into it. We'll, we'll kind of go through it. So I'm not even going to focus on this Omega because, you know, I, I really hate the Omegas. But I'll, I'll, I'll mention this one here, which is the Speedmaster Limited Edition, right? Um, a lot of action on this watch. So they got uh, right now. So what is this? This is a limited edition. The estimate was four to six thousand. Four to six thousand estimate. Let's take a look at the watch. Uh, this is the watch. Uh, there's already obviously some, you know, the Omega people, the Omega man. The Omega man is all over this watch. I think it's because, you know, again, one of the things that I think it's going to push it is, you know, all the tomato cans that can't, you know, can't get that white dial, and maybe they're going to jump on this one as sort of an alternative to the white dial. But this one is, is is catching it's catching some bids. Uh, there's one listed on Chrono uh, for fourteen thousand, which is in Germany. Um, and yeah, nice watch. I mean, you know, whatever. As an Omega, again, I'm not into it. But I don't know, Baron. Uh, what what's your take on this? I like that one. It's having the the colored sub dials brings uh, it brings contrast to the the new white dial piece. And I, I think it's, I, I might actually like it better. I mean, I'll have to see it, it in person, but um, right now from the photos, I like it better than the, the new white dial. And I, I just wanted to, to bring up how, I guess, 
he, I, it's it's such like a good marketing kind of gimmick for the for Omega and the Swatch Group to actually have the white dials uh, available, uh, only because you know I I, I think about uh, the story of how Charlie Chaplin right he enters the lookalike contest and he came in third, and, and then I bring that up because you know when people think about space and and, and you know the uh, the Speedmaster. You know, they think about like the spaceship and the, the spacesuits, and normally they're like, you know, it's white with black trim, but the Speedmaster yeah. is is mostly black with kind of like like white trim. But this falls more in line with what people think about when they think about you know space and, and NASA. Hey, and you know what? Listen, Baron, this is the, this this is the reason why we have you on the program. You come up with like ins like stuff which. People should know about it, but nobody thinks. It. I mean, I, I that never entered my mind, but that absolutely makes sense. The space, as, as we know, modern space, it's always been mostly white with black, right? Like you know, the yeah. white, the white, you know, the 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 uh, the uh, cost. What are the costumes? The uh, the outfits, uh, the spacesuits. I should say the outfits, the spacesuits, everything. Right? It's it's oh. And, uh, uh, what is it, 2001 Space Odyssey, right? I mean, that was, I believe, yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, and, you know, the white, it's interesting. White is kind of that modern, when people think of space age, it's white. It's white is the yeah. modern look, right? White. Not yeah. black, it's white. So this is the, the real Space Watch then. It, it, it is, because it matches people's perception of space it, and not so much it has to, you know, be historically accurate. It has to... Be historically accurate in a way that they that people imagine it to be. Yeah, aesthetic, right? So, is that the right? Yeah. Word? Is so, that what I'm looking for? Uh, I I don't know if 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 aesthetics is the, is the what I'm trying to capture. I'm trying to capture like perception. It's what people yeah. think space is. It doesn't matter what it actually is. It has to match what people think it is, and, and that's what's important in order to feed the marketing machine. The perception is the reality. Exactly. Exactly. So let's. I mean, uh, we're, let's we're, go ahead. Let's, we're, let's we're doing. We're, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say we're, we're doing some real, uh, some some real uh, Mike Orvitz stuff over here. Yeah, yeah. Now, okay. So this is uh, this is okay. I, I'm not into these micro brands. Uh, okay. So this Corono, you know, this guy obviously, you know, serious independent watchmaker guy. Again, this is one of these niche things. You know, the Japanese watches are getting. You know, the independent brands. They're getting, you know, they're getting some play, right? People right now, they're gravitating towards these uh, independent brands, right? They're looking for stuff off the beaten path, you know, and, and I think this is benefiting from, you know, like the Grand Seiko thing, you know, the whole thing. Again, it's it's not not really my cup of tea, but, uh, you know, people are into it, right? I mean, it's, I'm sure the accuracy, the quality is, is you know, better than Rolex, right? Let's, let's, you know, let's be clear about that. So... Uh, so this thing is what two thousand, three thousand is the estimate. Uh, watch, watch only, right? You got to read the description. Near mint condition. Uh, yeah, so it's and look at this. So it's probably you know these guys their estimates are pretty accurate. Stuff usually sells kind of in that range. So uh, fifteen hundred bucks right now is the current bid. A lot of you know a lot of activity, right? People are into it. A lot of activity. Uh, Baron, any thoughts on the Japanese brands? I. I like the Japanese micro brands just in, as a general kind of statement, especially at that price point. Uh, only because when you see micro brands today, they're just kind of like these things are just kind of slapped together, you know, and then they're manufactured in. in no, China I'm sorry. Maybe I, see, like, I, I use the wrong. I use the wrong word. Not not micro. Independent brand. It's an independent brand. It's not a micro. <laughs> it's, this is a legitimate. This is a legitimate. I mean, this guy is like a legitimate watchmaker. Uh, this is not like one of these, uh, you know, these Fugazi, you know, these these things that sell for five. No, this is a guy who's like a real guy. Uh, some of his stuff sells for big, big money. Uh, what is it? Uh, Hajime Asoka. Hajime Asoka. Um, okay, so I don't know too much about it. People are into it. Again, listen, who knows? Maybe uh, a year from now, I'll get the, I'll get it. I'll get the concept right now. Not my thing. But moving along, uh, this here is actually... The Colonel's watch. Well, uh, this is the white gold version of, you know, the the dual Tom that I have from JLC. Exact same watch. Uh, I have the one in rose gold. Amazing watch. Um, now this here is 
pretty reasonable estimates. Okay, so the estimate that they have here is six to ten thousand, right? Uh, this thing has been beaten to death. Uh, again, it's white gold. So again, take a look. You see, it's got a bunch of scratches, which you know they disclose. Look at this. It's got the nice hunter case back, right? So you can see the movement. Uh, let's take a. It's got the original buckle, the the deployant. It's got the deployant on it, right? Is that a deployant? Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, the full deployant. Now let's 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 zoom in. Let's zoom in here so we could see. Uh, hang on, let me. Let's go. How do we go back here? Uh, okay, it's got a bunch of little scratches. It's. I mean, this thing has been worn. It's definitely been worn. You can see the strap is. <laughs> yeah, it's. You know, it's 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 been it's been used. It's been it's this is a this is you know this is a watch actually actually has been put to use. Um, no box, no papers. The naked watch. Uh, right now, th thirty-two hundred is the current bid. Uh, you know, the way I look at this watch is, and of course, they disclose everything. It's running, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, um, you know, uh, the watch is working. Right, it's all good. Uh, it's just been beaten to hell. I, I shouldn't say that, but it's it's, it's been loved. It's been pre-loved. Right, is, if, is that if that's the right word? You're gonna want to get a new strap, right? And um, you definitely don't get, want to get a new strap, so you, you got to be prepared to spend, you know, I don't know, let's call it 400 bucks on a good, you know, let's say Camille Fournay strap, or if you want to go with JLC, which is the same thing. Um, I think if you can get this watch for four grand, let's call this $4,000, um, it's a good deal. I mean, for four grand, you'll have a dual time. Uh, maybe even, I'll tell you what, maybe even 4500 4500 premium plus shipping you'll, you'll be into this a five grand get the strap yeah for five grand i think it's a it's a great watch um baron your thoughts yeah so i i like the layout of the dials i've also liked the uh i guess the the non-standard sub dial they have on the uh, the upper left where yeah so you get like, it's like a retrograde no no it's the uh power reserve so you get power oh. reserve you get power reserve. You get the calendar, right? Which I, I again, I love the rotary dolls. Right? I'm not into the whole. So you get the you get the power reserve. Uh, you get the calendar. Uh, you get the dual time, and then the the um, the crown on the left. You turn that, and it adjusts time to the cities. Uh, I I think it's a phenomenal watch. Phenomenal watch. Um, and for a guy like you, I know you're you're like into these kind of low key watches that nobody will know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you're, because uh, yeah, you're you're a secret agent, man. I know you're a secret agent, man. You don't want to be too flashy. I think this is a watch that you could get away with. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I would say the you know the only improvement I I would like to see you know in uh, on this. Oh, well, I think it would make the watch a little bit better is if on the the markers in the chapter ring, uh, it, if they were perhaps you know a, a different color, so it'd be easier to read. But otherwise, yeah, it, this is a great looking watch. So, so now as yep. a general question, right? So as a general question, when you consider the, the pricing for these watches, do you also, you know, mentally add in, let's say another thousand dollars or something for, for service? Cause with these watches, Ooh. you know, you probably wanna, as soon as you get it, you, you might wanna, you know, send it in for service. And once, once they open these watches with complications, it, it, it could be like one to, you know, depending on the watch, maybe $5,000. Oh, okay. Great question. Right, right. So, right. So here's the deal, right? With auction, right? With auction stuff again. So here's here's the downside with auction. People people think, oh, wow, the price is cheap. Whatever. Listen, yeah, you you can get a deal, but you know you got to really kind of do your homework. You really got to like check things out. Ideally, you want to go and handle things in person, right? It's like whether it's watches, art, cars, whatever it is, things where which could have issues, right? So. You know your point is is very good. Like, I think yeah, you should you know you should always be prepared. I think yeah to like set aside these things have to be discounted by let's just call it you know you really got to get a deal. I think when it comes to auctions, unless it's some super rare unique piece, right? You really got to get a deal. So like you know when it comes to modern watches, I think for modern watches and a lot of these auctions are running modern watches, right? Like right, modern stuff made in the last 10 years. Well, they're all doing that, right? I would much rather get that watch from a dealer. Frankly, frankly, most dealers' prices, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the hammer price, when you add in the premium, 
it's going to be very close to retail at or sometimes above retail. It's kind of like I don't see any real value in modern watches with vintage. Yeah, with vintage, these auctions make sense because or like weird stuff or unique stuff. It makes sense because you're not going to come across it. This watch, it's hard to find white gold, right? This They made this in white gold. They made this one in rose gold. I have the rose gold. They also have one with a black dial rose gold, uh, which I think is the best one. Um, and But if you want the white gold, I don't know where you, you know, this is the, I think this might be the only one on the market. And you got to figure, look, if you can get this for five grand, yeah, you figure it might cost you, you know, um, you know, maybe, you know, again, 500, you're definitely going to need a strap. Um, so yeah, you gotta, you got, you do need to figure, fig, you know, figure these things. And that's what I'm saying. If you can get this for under five grand, I think you'll be okay. Uh, but again, conditionary, you know, I think this will probably sell for, I think it's going to go for like 4,500 bucks, 4,000 to 4,500 is my take. So, uh, what do the punters think? By the way, uh, any of you guys watching, uh, feel free to leave your comments. You know, uh, let's make a bet where, you know, this, this is fun. What do you think these watches will sell for? What do you guys think the Speedmaster will sell for? It's already above, it's above the estimate already. Very aggressive bidding. And it's gonna, the auction ends tomorrow, 12 noon. Tomorrow, 12 noon Eastern time is when this ends. So I don't know. What do you guys think this is going to, I think this might go for 10 grand plus. I think they put in a, a low estimate here to get people pumped up. This is probably going to go for like 10 grand again because of the white dial speedy the whole thing it's going to get people excited uh i think this thing is going to go for 4000 4500 maybe uh but let's move along i don't know let's let's hear what the punters okay again we got one of the classics here cartier always you know cartier is red hot these guys have been selling cartier and again this one has been beaten up the dial's got you know a little funkiness going on some funkiness going on in the dial. Um, 18 karat gold case, right? And what does it come with? It comes with, uh, again, deployed clasp. So you're getting, you, you know, the strap looks okay. Um, I mean, this thing has been worn. This thing has been, <laughs> you know, this thing has definitely been worn. Uh, five to 8,000 is the estimate. Uh, and um, current bid is 3,200. The ones like in decent condition, good condition, are going for about eight grand on Chrono in good condition. So, again, look at the dial's got some, I don't know, what do you call this? Like fly spot? You know, it's got like some patina. Patina. Which, patina. If, if, you take this, if, if you take this into Cartier for, for service, they will replace the dial. They're going to change the whole dial. Yeah. How much are they going to charge? How, how much would they charge? That, that I, I don't know. But but I I yeah. do know that that they they will replace the dial if you bring it in for official uh, Cartier service. Okay, wow, interesting, interesting. I don't know, uh, you know, it's kind of like, ah, eh, I don't. Think it's, All right, but it's tough. But, but, yeah, but also right, if you're wearing a, a Cartier, uh, I mean, do you really want something th that does have patina on on the dial? Because that's not one of the the watches, you know. Th that I'm imagining is kind of like you want one that looks warm because because Cartier at the end of the day they're it's it's jewelry it's like a, it's a jewelry yeah watch. uh by the way it's an excellent point I and I agree I think for Cartier it's something that is supposed to be beautiful and minty crisp you know it's um yeah it's not it's not it's not it's not like a Rolex where you know I think the patina adds uh you know pro character you know I don't think this gets yeah. extra points for character. Um, so again, you know this, and this is—I don't know. It's uh, again uh, one which is in good condition is going for like eight grand. There's a bunch of them on Chrono, a bunch of them for eight grand. I mean, this is like a commodity thing. They made like bazillions of these, right? Um, so where is it going to go for? I don't know. I don't know. What do the punters think? Uh, I don't know. What Rob? What do you think? Any thoughts? What do you think this is going to is going to hammer that for? Oh, I, I I don't really have a good judge of the the pricing on watches, but I will say for for Cartier, I think just the general designs they're all kind of uniform. So I, at the end of the day, I don't see uh, Cartier having one of their you know their traditional looking watches going for 
really all, all that much unless it has some kind of special like lineage to it. Yeah, I uh, listen. I think the I, I, the whole Cartier thing I think is is a like kind of a bubble, uh, and uh, you know I'm I don't get it. I don't I really don't get the Cartier. I mean, look, I they they're probably a little bit undervalued for a while. Um, you know, they're getting a lot of hype because of you know what is it that crash other things. Uh, I, I don't know. It's it's to me it's kind of like uh, there's better values out there. Like a lot of these things have like doubled. Not maybe not double, but a lot of them have really skyrocketed, uh, and I, I, you know, it's getting to the point where this is just better values. Like, uh, let's take a look at this Blanc Pawn, right? This is this is kind of a value watch. Again, you know, Blanc Pawn is it's one of these brands. Again, it's sort of, you know, people, you know, it's one of those things that people, you know, they're, you know, they're not. A lot of people are not that into it, but you know, because of you know the whole Phoenix thing, whatever they call it, Phoenix brand. But this is listen. This is a. This is like a, I think a good value for a chronograph. This is an, a gold chronograph, right? Gold, beautiful watch. I mean, do you get this or a Daytona? I don't know. This is. I mean, this is a beautiful watch. Again, not, this is obviously not going to be as rugged as a Daytona. But look at this. This thing is right now. The bidding is at around three grand. Um. You know what? The more, this look at the hands. These are beautiful hands. I've never seen hands like this actually. I, I don't pay attention to Blanc Pond, but like these are beautiful hands. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the watch, uh, actually, yeah, th th this is. I mean, this is also a lot more available. Well, I guess this is more of a vintage piece, but it's you can have this now versus a, a Daytona, which you'll pay a premium on. I personally, I would go for this cause just because it's. Um, I think it's got a better look, but I think also the person that goes for a Daytona, like they're, they're getting the D Daytona no, for a specific reason. So it's, it's a I, I don't idea. consider, yeah, I, I don't consider it's the same buyer going for, for either, uh, watch. No, it's a completely, it's a completely, but here's, but this is actually, this is a stunning watch. Uh, now this is a big size, 38 and a half millimeter. I didn't, even, I didn't realize, I thought, I, I thought this would be a 36 or something. 38 and a half. So this is a modern size. This is a big watch. So because of the lugs, the the pushers, this wear is like a big watch. It's probably bigger than a Daytona. I've never actually seen one in the metal. Um, you got a date. Oh, you got a date. By the way, yes, there is a date window. There's a date window. So you're getting an X-ray. This is gold, right? And this is a really nice yellow gold. You got this uh i think this they say it's a silver dial it looks like a white dial but it's a silvery dial this is a stunning watch uh okay you're getting the you get the buckle you got the original buckle which is always important because yeah okay that listen you don't want to be buying buck or placing buckles those things are expensive it's hard to find a lot of times um what a great watch so they have an estimate so their estimate is six to eight thousand the current bid is twenty nine hundred um the auction ends uh, the 20th. When is that? That's uh, Thursday? When is that? That's uh, Wednesday. The auction ends Wednesday. So it's probably going to be people coming in. Uh, what a great watch, right? Look at this. Beautiful hands. Um, I just looked on Chrono. These are going for about eleven grand. Uh, so somewhere in that range. So, you know, I, I don't know. What do you, you know, they're saying their, their estimate is six to eight. And I think they're pretty accurate. So probably this will probably sell maybe at seven grand or so. Oh, look at that. It says Blanc Pond on the side of the case. That is cool. There's a lot of nice details. A lot yeah. of nice details. Yep. And, and I mean, it I actually looks I, to be in pretty good shape. This is a beautiful watch. I mean, really, it's like I actually I'm almost I mean, if it was if it was four or five grand, I'm like, do I need this watch? I mean, I don't need, but it's what a beautiful watch. I mean, this is really one of the Look at this case. We you know this. I mean, the design of the case. What do you, what do you call this? A step down. I mean, it's just a beautiful case. The whole thing is beautiful. The hands, yeah, everything. It, it is. Yeah, it, it it works with the uh, the white dial. Um, yeah. This is what a what a oh Le Mans. It's the Le Mans, just like the the Daytona Le Mans. That's going for the big money now. I think this is this is a great value. This Blanc Pond. Uh, it might it might sell cheap again. Some of these things actually, again, it's an auction. You never know. Uh, this might go cheap. This might only go for like four or five grand, four grand. 
4,500. Uh, let's move along. So, um, one of my favorites, uh, Audemars Piguet, right? This is not the perpetual. It's the day-date moon phase. The day-date moon phase. Um, and this is actually, this is a, um, this is exactly the same. It's a, it's a JLC movement. It's exactly the same movement that I have in my uh, AP Royal Oak. It's exactly the same watch, or the movement. It's the same, same thing. Uh, now, these these have been moving up in price. These were going for like about six grand, five grand a couple years back. Uh, they've moved up. They're probably about nine grand or so. Um, and, I, you know, it's, it's interesting because the perpetual calendar that one really moved up a lot. These guys are still relatively cheap. I think it's because, you know, oh, it's the JLC movement. People are, are you know, they're they're like, oh, it's, you know, it's not the in-house. I don't really care. A JLC is a, you know, I'd rather have a JLC movement than an AP movement. Um, thin watch. I mean, beautiful watch. Uh, let's see here. Is the buckle original? I don't know if the buckle is original. Um, I'm not sure. You got to check that. Uh, may, yeah, if, uh, hopefully the buckle is original because again, these buckle, I, I think, that, I think it's an original, I'm not sure actually, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, beautiful watch. Look at the blued hands. Uh, Baron, your thoughts, your thoughts on the AP day, date, moon phase. Yeah, I, I think it is a beautiful watch, but I, I'm also thinking, you know, it what you you said last time about buying you know what like best in breed and even if you don't get best in breed you know like do you get a watch that the brand really isn't known for i i guess you know yeah. uh, if, you, if, you, if you're buying it for the beauty that is a, a different thing you know if you look at it and be like no this is an amazing looking watch i have to have it you know by all means get it but in terms of something you know you can wear you're just kind of like you know you're just whatever about it you know you might wear it for a little bit enjoy it but when it comes time to to pass it on, you know, it, it is it going to move? And, and that's yeah. where I'm kind of hesitant about this watch. Okay, no, very valid point. Yeah, so these, uh, yeah, case looks. Yeah, it's got a couple of little dings, or whatever. Um, you know, from a from a watch, great. I think it's an amazing, great watch. But again, yeah, this is not really. I think your point is uh, very very valid here. Because this is not, you know, the perpetual calendar, that one took off because that was such a great value. And that is, that was their thing. That was their movement, right? And, um, but this one is kind of, um, yeah, this is sort of in that, um, what is it? Uh, no man's land. It's kind of in that no man's land. I mean, it's not, it's not a horrible watch. It's not like one of their weirdo designs. I mean, it's a classic design, but it does... You know, it's kind of it is. It's not exactly the like you said. It's not like the AP. It's not Audemars. I mean, I don't know if that's fair to say or not. But it, yeah, it's not. It's not kind of like again. It's not a Royal Oak. Okay, that's strike one. <laughs> strike one. It's not a perpetual. It's okay. It, it's a good watch. I think it's a good watch. And so it's already forty two hundred. Again, if you can get this for five grand plus premium, you know, it's it's a good deal. Hopefully, the, hopefully the buckle is legit. Uh, are you familiar with Credor, the Japanese brand Credor? That's like the Seiko. I think it's, I think Seiko it, makes it. Yeah. Are you familiar with it? it yeah. It, it's supposed to be their like ultra premium line, I think above Grand Seiko. There's the movement. There, there's been a lot, yeah, there, there's been a lot of interest in, in Credor recently. I guess also has to do with the, uh, the big push that Grand Seiko is doing in the U.S. I, you know, to me, it just it, it it does nothing for me. Like like a lot of these Japanese brands, they're kind of like, you know, it's like a Lexus. You know, I mean, or actually the older like, like you know, it's a great car, right? You know, it's going to be phenomenal, right? But yeah, I, to me, it doesn't elicit any emotions. You know, it's just there's no, it's just bland. I, to me, I, it's like I, I, it just doesn't elicit any emotions. I'd rather I, put up with the headaches of, you know. German cars. <laughs> I, I I agree. I agree. It's uh you know when I look at watches, it's just it's 
predominantly the, the Swiss watches that, that I'm drawn to. I think they just have a better sense of design. And, and, you know, the German watches, they make great watches, but the German have like, it has like a specific kind of look. No, okay, I was talking about German, I, cars. I, I, I'm German cars. No, no, not German, German cars. I'm not talking about the German cars versus Japanese cars. You know, the, the Japanese yeah. cars just don't have, I don't think it's just, it, there's no emotional, like, there's not, it's, okay, like, let's compare even German to Japanese. Excuse me, German to mm -hmm. Italian. Italian cars, there's an emotion. Or, uh, immediate emotion. Yeah. Immediate emotion. The German is, car is obviously a, more pared back. And the Japanese is even like, <laughs> it's just, you know, it, it's like, uh, you know, Wonder Bread. It's just very plain. It's like very, I don't know. It's very good quality, but, you know, uh, okay, I don't get the Credor or whatever. Maybe somebody has comments. Somebody can explain to me the Credor. Uh, now we're going to get to the highlight, the real highlight in just a second of the auction, the real highlight, the heavy hitter, which I think is going to be this, ironically, for the Japanese market. This Patek Philippe was a J Japanese limited edition with blue dial, which looks, again, for an Aquanaut, amazing. But I'm going to go to that in a second. Uh, let's let's focus in on this. The Moser, you know, the Mosers, the Mosers. Um, like, yeah, people are really I pushing this Moser. Yeah. On. Okay. So I actually really like that that Moser. I mean, I, not to own, but just as just just from just from looking at it, it looks like it's it's definitely like a modern kind of watch. When you look at it, I think it elicits the kind of emotion that that I don't know something that I would say like modern art should because it looks kind of traditional, but then there's some new elements to it that make it different. But in a way where I'm kind of on the fence, where I'm like. This is different, but I don't know if I like it or if I don't like it. And I, I think that's that's where you want to be. Because then you, yeah. when you look at it, you're kind of experiencing something new. Yeah. Um, okay, hold on. Let me, let's go. Before we get into that, because, okay, let me, let's actually, let me just get to some of the comments from the punter. So, Jared, Jared. Okay, it's Jared. A uh, very interesting point. <laughs> you know, I, I had the video about the big money energy watches. Uh, yeah, so I think I think the big money energy, you know, you want the watch as like give us that emotion, the big money energy emotion. Um, the uh, the Creedor definitely does not have that. In this whole auction, I got to tell you, in this whole auction, if I look at everything, like maybe the Daytona, like in terms of that, like real response, the Daytona, and again, I, I'm not a Daytona fan. Uh, listen, here's the thing, like, okay, the AP, the day date moon, it's got that kind of like old money vibe. I think there's a good value. Again, it's this is gonna be one of those watches which you know it's kind of a sleeper. You're you're gonna be safe with this watch. Like if you get this for four or five five grand, let's say, you know, your your money is safe. Uh the Blanc Pawn, I think the Blanc Pawn actually, this watch does have a little bit of the big money. If you put this on the right strap, if you put this on like a an interesting strap, like up like you gotta you gotta put this on maybe like a like a yellow alligator strap, like a bespoke yellow alligator strap, or you know stingray or something crazy. This watch will look amazing because this gold. You know, listen, everybody does gold slightly different, and everybody makes slightly. This is a beautiful yellow gold, and because it's on a strap, uh, it's sort of it's not like it's not obnoxious. But the watch, this is a big watch, 38 and a half. I would say in the, in this whole auction, I think this is the big money energy watch, uh, Jared, uh, or as close I, as you can get. I, I agree. Uh, also, on, on the page, that one is also my favorite watch. You know, and hold on. Let me, let me, let's address some of the other punters. Now, uh, uh, Jared was saying, yeah, Kevin O'Leary was spooking. Creator. Yeah, Kevin O'Leary. I mean, this guy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a video a review of his guy. Kevin O'Leary, I don't know, like this guy's got very weird taste. I, I would basically, like, I think Kevin O'Leary basically spruiks, like, whatever he hears, you know, I don't know, somebody else talk. I mean, he basically buys with it. I think, you know, there's an expression in the art business, like, you know, you're supposed to buy with your eyes, but some people buy with their ears, right? They buy, like, whatever somebody's, like, they heard, oh, this is the cool thing of the moment. Hey, that's what Kevin O'Leary is. He's buying, like, okay, oh, this is what, oh, this is the watch that, like, the rappers are wearing. Oh, yeah, I'm going to buy that. Okay, because I want to hang, because I'm going to hang out with those guys, and I'm going to impress them. That's Kevin O'Leary. 
I think Kevin O'Leary's taste is highly questionable. Uh, pay, Kevin O'Leary is basically a paid prostitute. I mean, he really is a paid prostitute. He's shilling for like everything. He's shilling uh, penny stocks. He's shilling uh, uh, fuck every. I mean, this guy's Kevin O'Leary is a Kardashian basically. Kevin O'Leary, he might be worse than a Kardashian. Who who's like the worst? Who basically will spruik whatever people? Maybe he's a, he's a Kardashian. He basically he's a Kardashian. But you know, if he's getting paid, you know, God bless him. Okay, uh, Baron Taylor. Moser, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, Baron Taylor says Moser reminds me of a Grand Seiko with a better bracelet. Uh, you know, the bracelet, hang on a second, let's pull up the bracelet on the Moser. Um, I'm not on the Moser bandwagon like at all. Uh, I don't really get the Moser thing. I mean, I do see, no, they do make beautiful quality movements. I'm not going to argue that point. Um, I just like their design. I don't know. I don't know what, where they're coming and they're going. Like, it's like, um, I'm just not into, again, the bracelet is actually quality wise. I, I've never had one on, but look at the clap. Look at the closure. I mean, this, look at this element, this beautiful, this is a nice touch. Um, I don't know how it wears. I don't know anything about it. Um, it it really does nothing for me. It does it does have that like Lexus look. To me, this looks like a like a Lexus basically. It's kind of like you know beautiful, qual amazing quality. Uh, doesn't you know? Do it doesn't give me an erection. You know what I mean? It really doesn't. It doesn't have that. This is not that watch. Um, I mean, look at this. What wow, beautiful? So would you say that it it looks too engineered? Is is that the issue? Ah, uh, it's wow. That's a good way of saying it. Yeah, I, I think these guys are like. It, to me, it's like okay, they're trying to do something, but like, they they put thought into it, but they're kind of like. In the wrong, um, I mean, the case shape, and I like I like kind of these you know squared off or baguette, whatever you want to call the shape, TV doll. I like that shape. Uh, I like it on like the ellipses of the seventies, but like I, this thing is. You know what it is? I'll tell you. Okay, here's what it is to me, and maybe you can articulate this better than I can. This is sort of like it doesn't look like a modern watch of the moment. It looks sort of like a vaguely vintage. I mean, this is somewhere in between a vintage look and a modern. This is sort of like like these guys can't figure out if they're in the 60s or they're in the 2020s. You know, like I mean, it's got like these 60s vibes. And it's like, it's, it's kind of, it's got its foot in both these two different eras. It's got the quality of the 2020s, but the look is, you know, it's a vaguely 60s look, but I don't know. So it's a limited edition. Um, okay. Now I, I have a question in regards to this in relation to your experience, uh, you know, it, in art dealing. So when you have a, you know, a piece of art that, that is something that is comparable to this, right? Where it's like, all right, it, it looks modern, but it's got an element of something else that I can't quite, you know, pin down, right? So when you have a piece like that, that does that, is that something that you would say is going to to sell well or or not? Ah, you know, it's why it's a what? It's, man, you bring up, <laughs> you bring up. Okay, <clears throat> so it's interesting, right? So basically, you know, with let's say, you know, in the, in the case of of art, right? Like there's, you know, let's say you're, you're talking about impressionist paintings, right? You're talking about, um, uh, okay, so like impressionist. Let's say, you know, you, if you're, you know, the, the, if you're talking about impressionists, you want real impressionists. You're talking about the guys who are painting in the, you know, 1870s, the 1890s, possibly 1900, right? You know, we talk about the, the either the first rank guys, the A-listers, you know, Monet, whatever. You talk about maybe some B-listers. Um, or, or then you have like, uh, but you want that guy, right? You don't want, what you don't want is you don't want somebody painting in that style, in the impressionist style in the 1950s or 60s, right? So, and you have, you had, you had a whole, listen, you had a whole bunch of commercially successful artists who were painting like, you know, like these big guy's name is, uh, uh, Andre, uh, shit, it'll come to me, Andre, uh. Shit, the name escapes me. 
Uh, anyway, so this guy is known for painting like these kind of beach scenes, and you know his work, like a, a I don't know, sort of like a twenty-four by thirty-six painting might go for like twenty grand. Uh, beautiful colors, very like really nice colors. Uh, 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 Hamburg, Andre Hamburg, Andre Hamburg, right? Uh, that's the guy's name. So he does beautiful work, or he did beautiful work, right? Uh, he was commercially very successful um, and beautiful stuff, right? They come in, you know, I think Wally Findlay Gallery or stuff. Any, like, it, those paintings are all over, like, Palm Beach, uh, you know, New York. Like, you, it was a kind of like a, it was a thing people were buying in the 60s, 70s, possibly even into the 80s. But it never had any real, you know, the problem is the guy was born too late. He was doing that style in the 60s. So his work today sells for, you know, and then fell out of favor. We had 20 grand. It's commercial. It's beautiful stuff. It's collectible. It's collectible. He's not an important artist because he didn't innovate. He wasn't an innovator. If this guy was around in the, if he was doing that same style in the 1890s or even 1900, you know, the paintings would sell for, you know, anywhere from a couple hundred grand to a couple million bucks. He would have been, I mean, maybe not a couple, maybe a high, high six figures. Right, uh, and his father was uh, Boudin. That's his actually his father-in-law, who was actually the, the the inventor of impressionism. Really, considered the inventor, Eugene Boudin. Well, by the way, great value paintings, great value paintings, Boudin. Um, but the problem is that guy was born, uh, you know, a hundred, you know, eighty years too late. Right. So to me, this is that same thing. Right. These guys are kind of doing a sixties thing. In the modern era, to me, this is like a, a Andre uh, Hamburg painting. You know, it's like great quality, everything there, but you know, it's kind of not of the moment. Uh, to me, it's just like it doesn't. It does have modern touches. That it's just I don't know. It's just that. Does that make sense to you? A, a little bit, uh, a little bit. So I, I'm still trying to process that in, in regards to kind of just you know. So Moser's like they're a, they're a low volume watch company like low volume high price and then I, i'm thinking is that enough for them to just drive the market just because it's you know they don't have to uh, appeal to, to to a buyer of a higher volume manufacturer you know i i, I like listen i i'm not going to get into like i can't get into the whole the the you know the business model of these guys like that's a whole like i don't know their business i don't care about their business model the whole thing and and, and this whole thing with oh small volume I don't think anybody really cares about the small. I, I think the small volume thing, this kind of like you know artisan t thing that they're they're pushing, people pushing. You know, I don't think it really makes a difference at the end of the day, or I don't think it's going to have a lasting unless some for some incredible stuff. Maybe for like the, I don't know. It's you know, you listen again. The, the the jury is is out. The jury is out. You know, we don't know. Listen. I, this is my opinion. I might be dead wrong. You know, could be 10 years from now, five years from now, people are gonna say, wow, Moser, wow, this was the this was this was this was the the ground floor opportunity. Uh I just um, you know, but I don't see it. But you know, I I would have I probably would have said the same thing about um FP Journe. You know, again, I I I think they do beautiful quality, whatever. It, it just it's there's not enough in it for me to say like this thing, I don't know, I just this thing with low, I, I, I would rather, you know what, my my thing is, I would rather go with something which is, you know, sort of a proven, you know, a proven entity, um, mm -hmm. you know, which has been around, you know, it's like one of these, like, again, again, I, I don't like the modern Patek and I'll, I'll, and all that stuff. I'm, I'm concerned about, you know, what, you know, where they're going to end up. But yeah, at least with Patek, with Rolex, with AP, now AP is a great example. You know, you're safe with that, I believe, because these guys have such a history. There's so much – they've built up such a brand perception. They have such great it, – it's it's not going to go away, right? I think you're almost better off if you're, like, looking at this as an investment. And it seems to me like you're pushing that line. If you're looking at it as an investment, I think, like, some of the AP models, the, the Royal Oak models, have better speculative upside. You know, if you're, if you're going to push the, the speculative – <laughs> the investment narrative, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, um, yeah. But with that said, let's look a look. This is the I think this is going to be the star of the auction, right? The Aquanaut, the Aquanaut, right? Like, um, so you got the Patek Aquanaut, a blue dial, 
you got the sticker, the service sticker. Uh, I mean, this is um, interesting. Now, look at this. So this watch, right? So they had, what did they say? This came out. Um, so they had a forty to 60,000 estimate, right? Oh, it comes full set. Oh, look at this. This is a full set, right? And, you know, we say with Patek, the Patek collectors, they want, they want that full set. They're very particular. I mean, that adds a lot of value. Look what you get here. You're getting everything. You're getting the service box, that cardboard box, which is probably worth like five grand in value. You're getting this folder. I've never seen one of these folders. I've never seen this type of folder. I, I usually see that kind of that slim. I usually slim, I've never seen one of these full size. This is like a full size, you know, like a 12 by 14 or something. I've never, this is cool. I mean, this is. So this has got the whole Japanese uh, thing here, Japan Service Center. Uh, so it's good, I think, till next year. The warranty? I don't know. This is uh, cool. Wow. I mean, this is somebody's gonna go bananas for this watch. I think this is gonna go like some crazy number. I mean, not crazy, but you know, this might go for. It might go for a crazy number. Uh, look at this. You know, look look how much of a difference it makes with the blue dial versus the black dial. Baron, what do you think? This blue dial? I, why didn't they just keep doing this? That that is a good question. You know, it, it's it, I guess it's the same question that can be asked for any sort of limited edition piece that they put out. Because they, I know they also have like a a green dial that people went nuts over. So it's ugly. It's, it's an olive green. It's, no, it's like an olive. It's the wrong green. It's like an olive drab. It's like a camouflage yeah. green. It's like an army green. Yeah, but that that's the kind of like whole aesthetic though of the uh, the aquanaut. You know, it's 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 kind of like like, like, like rugged, kind of like almost like 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 military kind of look. So the I, I think the green works for it. The the blue looks amazing. And if you're the type of person that is specifically looking for uh, an, an aquanaut. Right, and if you can afford it, you know why not pay the premium for for a special dial? Yeah, you know what? Okay, so that's another interesting point. Yeah, I think look, the Aquanaut buyer today, it's like it's a like yeah. I think look, if you're going to go for an Aquanaut, because again, you're basically buying this you know this tomato can watch, you know, on, on a rubber strap. I, I again, I think it's just a overhyped Hublot. It's a copy of Hublot. Um, you know, and this was again, this was kind of their 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 basic shitter watch that they did. You know, as uh, I don't know, it was like that's I don't, whatever I don't know, as a giveaway or something, <laughs> whatever it was. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, everybody has gone crazy for 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 the Aquanaut. This was the dog. This was the dog. You couldn't give these things away, right? And now people are crazy. But the thing is, the people who are buying it now are, you know, they're really. If you're willing to spend that type of money, which is, I don't, I don't what, what are the new ones going for? Like 30, 40 grand, right? Why not? Why not go a little bit extra so that you don't look like another, you know, another guy, another sheeple? I mean, you don't want to be that bro in the fleece vest, right? Like, I again, I think the Aquanaut is sort of like the, I call it like the, uh, you know, mid-level finance guy. Like the, base, the basic guy is going to have, He's gonna have, uh, you know, the the Submariner, the black Submariner, right? He's got the Submariner, the black Submariner. He's got a Starbucks coffee, and the mid-level guy, the mid-level guy is gonna have an Aquanaut, and he's gonna be getting his coffee from a uh, Blue Bottle Coffee, <laughs> or, or some other. Like he's gonna send somebody to pick him up a, yeah, you know, some bullshit. You know, I don't know, hand poured, whatever it is, the hand poured, whatever. I don't know. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Joe is, Joe is not a fan. Yeah, I'm not a fan, but I, with the blue dial, it looks good. By the way, uh, interesting. So Jared has a comment about, I think the Creedor, Jared, is that your comment about, is that about the Creedor <laughs> or is it about the Moser? And then this might be insulting to the Baron, uh, Red Baron, Red Baron. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, yeah, but uh, but just to get back on, on topic of the uh, you know the the aquanaut, 
I, you know, for the future of the Aquanaut, I'm, I don't know if it's going to maintain the premium it, it does uh, in, in the, in the aftermarket, you know, on the secondary market, you know, just cause I, I'm thinking the, you know, the, well, the overall we're seeing the hype, you know, for Rolex watches are, are kind of dying down now. So it, it's, you know, what is going to be the long-term future of, of an Aquanaut are people that are into it now, or are they still going to be into it 10 years from now? So that's, no, I agree. I think, I, I agree. Listen, I, I, I agree. This, this is kind of one of these things, right? This is going to be seen as, oh, this was the watch of that era. It's sort of like, you know, the Rolex Datejust, the two-tone Rolex Datejust with a champagne dial. That was the watch of the 80s, right? You know, that was like an 80s watch. Like, that was the watch, right? You had to have that, the the, the Datejust or the Day Date, the President, with a champagne dial. In the 80s, that's the 80s watch, Right. And I think the Aquanauts, people are going to look back, you know, 10 years from now as like, oh, this was one of those one of those guys who bought during the COVID era, you know, that whole or like the hype era, the watch hype era. It's it's going to get tagged. It's going to get that. Uh, I think this is going to be tagged with that um, hype watch era thing. The Aquanauts, um, for sure, the Richard Mille. I, I, for sure, that's why I, I think the Richard Mille is definitely going to have that. It's going to be kind of like also uh, what happened with um, Frank Mueller. Frank Mueller, that was the thing. That was the, that was the watch in the late '90s, or yeah. even uh, thinking what else? What other? I think people have said Alan Alain Silberstein. Those like funky watches, which yep. I think people. Yep. I think and, that and, was and a there, thing. And, and Piaget with, with their their polos, you know, back when the polo looked yeah. awesome. There you go. So Piaget, the Piaget Polo, right? The Piaget Polo, that quartz shitter, that was the watch of the, you know, Studio 54 era, like the late 70s, early 80s. So also the Cartier. I think the same thing with the Cartier, those uh, tanks, you know, the two-tone, the gold ones. It's just a very, it's, it's, it's a watch of a certain era. And again, with those things, those fashions do come back. That's why, like, I've been into the two-tone thing. I never would have considered a two-tone watch in the 90s or even, you know, in the 2000s, early 2000s. Uh, but now I think that kind of thing is coming back, that aesthetic, the two-tone, it, it's coming back. I think it's going to be a, a big thing, you know. Um, and, and also the Royal Oak, you know what? Again, like, you know, when I said, like, you know, here are you know, the, the Ten Commandments of watches. We don't know, you know, nothing is for sure, Right. You know, fashions change. The Royal Oak might be, you know, it, it, I think it's good for at least another five years. But I don't know if people are going to respond to it 10 years from now, like 20 years from now. I don't know if it's going to have staying power because who knows? Somebody else might come up with some crazy design and it's going to make everything else look quaint. It's going to make everything else look quaint. You know, it's like, like, look, Moser, you know, these guys are doing interesting things. Um, I'm trying to think. You know, you have a bunch of these independent brands that are doing really interesting things, uh, whether it's MBNF, others. I'm trying to think who else. Uh, Res oh, you know, what? we'll go through some. I'll show you some interesting watches. Hang on a second. Let's look at some interesting things. So this is what they're doing. I'm not even going to talk about this because this is like a you know basic bitch Daytona, right? Okay, so you better off just getting this retail, not retail, you know, secondary market. What like, yeah, I think this is just auction filler or whatever. This is you know, you're not going to get a value here. Uh, but let's look at some of their past results. Look, let's look at some of their some of the stuff that these guys have sold. Um, hang on, let me see if I can. The chair needs all. Uh, can you hear squeaking? Yeah. Uh, Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, is that yours or mine? I think it's my chair. I got. It's the air on no. chair. It, my chair. It might be. No, no, no. It's not squeaking. Okay. My, my my chair is squeaking a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there you go. Watch Lux. Best way to get a bargain. Do your homework. Check the result. Yeah. And also, you know what? Uh, best thing is to, um, if you can, you, you really want to see the thing in person, right? Because there's no refunds, right? It's not It's not like a dealer. It's not like one of these guys. You buy it. You know, if you don't like it, you can send it back within a couple of days, usually, right? Here, you got, I think they have an office in LA. So, uh, I think they were in West Hollywood, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know what? Uh, if you see something, if you're there, uh, check it out. Uh, that's why, you know, auctions, you know, 
usually they're priced you know lower because you know it's historically it was always a wholesale thing it was a dealer market right so people would show up in person okay now you know I, listen I've bought things from, I, uh, from auctions and sometimes you you know you get something that's amazing sometimes like oh shit <laughs> like <laughs> the, the pictures were too good and you know whatever um these guys actually take very good pictures but still and by the way you notice their their lighting is not flattering lighting it's just very like it, it basically you I think this the pictures here what you see is what you get this is that's what it looks like to me so uh let's look at some of the auction results that they've had right okay so they sold this Cartier tank 19 grand tank chinois 19 grand right with premium so 20 grand rose gold nice watch right what and what was the uh what was this thing so it was a limited edition this is so this is a modern watch limited edition 18 to 24 box papers okay so it's sold for night okay uh again pretty strong okay so yeah, you got the vintage Daytona. I, I I don't know the vintage Daytona stuff. I I can't say you know. Okay, so sixty grand, the big red doll, whatever. Okay, but uh, so here they sold the Moser for twenty four grand, right? Uh, still with the stickers on it, right? Seconds, interesting. And what was this? Fifteen to twenty five. So it sold you know near the top range. Okay. Uh, let's take a look. They had a, an Aquanaut that sold for twenty nine grand, the classic Aquanaut. Baron, they had one of your Breguets here. Ooh, look at this, a world time Breguet. White gold. Yeah, that that is a good looking watch. I I think the crown's a little on the chunky side, but otherwise it's it, it's a looker. You know what? I actually like this crown. It's like a funky. Hang on, let me see if we can get a. Can we get a? Is this a deployment? Wait, hang on. Yeah, it is. Okay, hang on. I actually like this. I mean, you know, it, it is. It's a, it, it stands out. It's like a little bit weird. But you know, with the whole coin edge thing, you got the knurling. Is it like, yeah, it's knurling. Yeah. Kind of like a Bentley knurling. Yeah, it's a cool watch. Yeah. Uh, it's a world time with a date. Uh, I don't know. This is, to me... Uh, yeah, okay, so it's got, let me see, what does it come with? Okay, deployant, white gold, yeah, look at this. Bach, full set, full set. <clears throat> now, Baron, let me ask you this, what would you rather get? Would you rather get this watch for 10 grand, Brege, full set, right? White gold, again, oh, white gold. And we know that Archie Luxury bought a uh, Patek white gold. <laughs> alas, 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 it was straight uh, from London, you know, with the, machete uh machete mark on the crystal machete chip no box papers very suspicious how much did he i think he paid like 30 grand or something 25 grand Tw somewhere around 30 grand i think he paid does anybody know what archie paid but and hit but i don't know what would you rather have would you rather buy that for 30 grand or would you rather buy this for 10 grand oh i'd rather have this for 10 definitely not even 9900 I, you know what? I would I would rather get you know what for 10 grand, I think it's an amazing watch. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's sold at the low end of their estimate. The, whoa, below us. It's sold for 10 to 15. Oh, the estimate was 10. And this is a huge watch. 38 millimeter. 38 millimeter. Um 38 millimeter. So it's a huge watch. Look at this. Ooh, you know what? This I gotta tell you, this the crown, it's it's funky. It's kind of fugly. I actually like this. I mean, it's so fugly. I mean, they put thought into it. I actually like this a lot. You know what? This is a type. I I probably would have bid on this watch. I would have bid on this watch. This is a great watch. Just put this on a nice uh, strap, and it's a great value for ten grand. A world time watch. White gold. Yeah. Breguet. So I, I think the the issue with the crown is that it looks like it should have been capped with a gem, but they didn't. They I guess they decided to make it more rugged with the. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Going no, I, I, you know what? I like it. I like it. I mean, it's it's sort you know it makes a it makes a statement. It's sort of like um, it's fugly. You know, it's fugly. It's sort of like it's 
But look at this. I mean, it's, it's I, I mean, this is cool. This is cool. I and mean, this is a unique watch. Like this is the type of watch you'll never see anybody wearing this watch anywhere. I guarantee you. Yeah. This. Yeah. You'll never see anybody wearing this watch. You know, you're getting a, a you know, a high horology brand. 10 grand. There we go. GGXL. I agree. 10 grand. This is steel. Total steel. Yeah. So uh, if you polish your watch, yeah. So, I mean, this looks like basically like, I, I, you know what I like about this watch? Here's the thing I like about this Breguet. The fact that it came with box papers, right? The fact that it came with box papers, to me, that tells me the watch was owned by a, um, you know, uh, a real a serious person, a collector. A guy took care of it. You can see it's in, you know, definitely the case is in good shape. It was definitely worn, right? The guy definitely wore, you know, look at this. It's been worn. You're going to want to get rid of that nasty strap, you know, that you know, probably got also some bacteria there. But, you know, I mean, look, this thing is, the guy definitely wore this. I don't know how long, this probably was worn for, for sure, a number of years. He kept everything. Look at, oh, <laughs> and the hang tag. Look at this. Look at this. Everything. The full set. Yeah. Full, full set. Uh, that's how you do it. This, up, this, is, this is what you want. It's like you buy a Ferrari, you want the service records, you want actually you even want a sticker. You want the original window sticker with the car. That's what you're getting here. What a great deal. Look at this. Oh, it's, you know what? Look at this. Look at the dial. It's like a uh, Aquanaut. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, oh, for there. It, I think that that design on the dial that's pretty common for for world timers. I think there's another brand that that does that. Um, I, I want to say I think, globe. yeah, this is a beautiful globe. I mean, this is a really, you know what? I'll tell you what. I like the font. The font I like a lot better than Patek. Much yeah. better. The font is mm -hmm. better than Patek. You got a little gold, a uh, little. You see those little gold, yellow gold. Um, Little uh, what do you, what do you call those index? Not index. What are they? Uh, little, whatever. Uh, amazing watch. Yeah, I, I also think that the uh, the selection of cities that they used for the, the world time uh, ring it looks for the most part it looks balanced. So that that's the one thing I don't like about. Uh, a while back we looked at a Gerard Perigo world timer. Uh, that was my main criticism of, of that particular watch was that the selection of cities was not balanced. Like there was too much, um, there was too much white space in part of the dial and then another, I'm sorry, of the ring. And then another part of the ring, it was kind of just like, it was just taken up by Whoa. text. So, so we, so got a we got the Brege fan club here. Uh, <laughs> Red Baron. This is one of your, one of your people. Baron yeah, yeah. Taylor said, Colonel, I keep telling you, Breguet is the best deal going for high horology. Blanc Pawn as well. Used, of course. Used, of course. Not retail. Yeah. So so uh, I, I, I agree. But for Blanc Pawn, definitely amazing, amazing deals uh, in the secondary market. Uh, you know, used. But I, I'm not confident about the future of Blanc Pawn just because their designs are too... Like they're they're too old looking. It, it's yeah. in a way that doesn't appeal to the modern market. So I I don't I don't know what they're going to do with the brand, but they need to do something or else they're going to disappear. I mean, the only thing that keep, that's keeping them afloat, I think, is the Fifty Fathoms, which you know it, it's in its own right. It, it's a good diving watch, and, it, and it's like it, some of the models look amazing. How much, how much is that? How much is the Fifty Fathoms? Is that, well, how much is that? Really? It, it, uh, there, there's a whole range. Uh, they start at thirty the, the at the low end, thirty eight millimeters. Uh, I think that the basic one just goes for somewhere around nine, ten thousand. Okay. Yeah, and then you can get a discount. Yeah, why would I want uh, that for you know I get a, 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 a you know a submariner? I mean, you know, it's like you know if you're gonna get a, a dive watch, you got to go with best of breed, you know. And again, I don't yeah. supposedly they invent the best of breed a submariner. You know, I and again I said I love the Glashuta, right? The Glashuta CQ. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. love that watch. We talked about it. I actually, I would love to get that watch. I think it's better than the Submariner, the two-tone uh, on the strap. I would love to get that watch. I just can't justify buying it 
you know, again, gr on the gray market, it's nine grand. It's like 12 grand retail. I can't justify paying nine grand for that watch when, you know, I, you know, Submariner is like, you know, a bl my bluesy, the King Tut is like, 11 grand uh you it's like you know the i actually i'm gonna have a video coming out you know the, the glass shoot you know it's like you gotta explain it's one of these watches you gotta explain you know it's like and, and i don't feel confident that the value is going to keep up i think you know if i buy that glass shoot cq if i pay nine grand in, in in let's say in three years that watch will be worth five grand or six grand maybe six grand meanwhile the submariner will be worth you know 13 grand 14 grand I feel like an idiot. Yeah, and but that's even, because I, you're. <laughs> yeah, but that's because you're coming at it, you know. From you also think about value retention as well. Uh, I mean, there's yeah. a huge portion of the market that that you know they just think about is okay. Uh, you know, do, do I like this watch? Do I like the brand? And you know, there's a lot of people that have Submariners. You know, like they, they wear it. They've been wearing it for a while, and it's kind of like they get to a point where it's like, all right, you know, th this is it's a good watch, but you know, like everyone else has one. Like I, they want something else that's kind no. of, you know, in the same prestige category, but it's different. You, it's, yeah, but okay, so basically you're paying, a, okay, so basically you're paying a premium to, to be that different guy. I don't know if I'm willing to do that. Like, you know, it's like, it's, 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 a, it's a, basically like to me, depreciation is, I really hate depreciation. Like I, like, I don't buy new cars. I I I don't want depreciate. The only thing I buy new is clothing, right? And like, and, and when I buy, let's say, when I buy a suit, I, I'm willing to spend you know big money for a, a bespoke suit, a classic suit. First of all, because I, I just like the whole thing. I like the tailor, whatever. But it lasts 20 years. Like I have suits, you know, that I had made 20 years ago, right? They look amazing. Now I, they cost a fortune, right? Like for a Savile Row suit, in you know, 20. It was, like, but the price have doubled. Okay, today. It's like double what it cost, you know, 20 years ago, right? The suit looks amazing. And, and as it ages, it actually looks better because now you look like, you know, you look like uh, it's got that old money look now. <laughs> you know, it's got, it's got a little, <laughs> it, it looks better. But, but listen, I, you know, the choice is, you know, do you pay, uh, okay, so back then, right? Let's say, do you pay, at that point, the choice was, okay, do you pay 3,500 bucks? for bespoke suit and deal with all the bullshit you got to deal with it or do you buy a new suit for a thousand bucks at uh i don't know whatever off the rack well it was probably 1500 bucks for like a good like a good whatever it was whatever the i don't know not brooks whatever the brand whatever you want right something classic right uh that, but here's the thing 10 years later the the value is still in the bespoke. so i'd rather buy i'd rather spend money on something which is gonna have that like i'm a value guy basically i don't want depreciation I like I don't I don't want to buy a new watch and have it depreciate. I, listen, it's a luxury. Basically, depreciation is a, is the real luxury, in my opinion. So that's that's my thing. You know, I, I, it makes me crazy the idea to think that I trade it out of a Submariner bluesy for a, a, a Glashuta, and then you know I, I, it went backwards. You know, I got the so okay. We got some interesting comments here coming in. Okay, so Bob, Robert Taylor. Breguet, Breguet, bullish on Breguet. Uh, Watch Lux, great question. How do we bid? Okay, so um, okay, so we're gonna cover a couple of auctions. So these guys on their site, you can register on their site. You, you just sign up uh, or call them. Call them. Tell me you saw you saw this on the Watch Reporter. Call them up and tell me you want a discount. You want a two hundred fifty dollars off. Tell me you want two hundred fifty dollars off. <laughs> no, maybe the water. Maybe the no. Seriously, call them up. Tell me you want to speak to Jason Grunberg. You saw it on Watch Report. You want 250 bucks off because the, that's what they said. Nah, maybe, maybe they will. Maybe they won't. I don't know. It's a small operation, so maybe they will honor it. Um, okay. GG, okay. Blanc Pond, 30 to 50% discounts new. That That is true. There are some Blanc Ponds you can get new for slightly more than 50%. If you go to... Uh, Ashford.com right now, and you, you pull up uh, Blanc Pan. They they have one watch there that's like it's a dress watch. It's a good, it's a good looking watch, uh, white gold. It has a retrograde seconds uh, with a a pointer date, and you can get it for like nine five somewhere in that range, and and it retails for like like it like twenty thousand somewhere around there, like upwards of twenty thousand. Oh. 
you know, you had an interesting point about a uh, black pond. I'm gonna, uh, let's, I'm gonna go into this, which is really cool. Uh, uh, the thing with black pond, their design, like you said, okay, it's kind of old fashioned, but you know, here's the thing. It's kind of old fashioned that it looks dated, whereas Breguet is old fashioned, but it's made to look, you know, 18th century. You know, it's got that, you know, uh, 1700s, 1800s look. So it's specific, you know, like their push where this thing is, I think Blanc Pond is unintentionally old fashioned, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're, they, they are, they look like they're true to the time as opposed to Breguet, which is kind of like, you know, it, it's a modern vision of the past. Yeah. Okay, so this is a cool watch. Resins. Uh, I actually love what these guys are doing. I think it's phenomenal, fascinating, really fascinating. Um, hang on, so let me see. What do, so this was a ten to fifteen thousand estimate, right? Um, now this apparently, you know, you know this works. Do you, are you familiar with the resins? A, a, a little bit. There is. There's. They designed the case so that the case actually has gearing in it. So the the entire thing moves. It's it, it's from an engineering standpoint, it's 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 amazing. Uh, and it's also oil filled, so that it has. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, this is the so you, you can. Yeah. It's a crazy thing. Like, so, I, so you you explain you explain to the punters how this thing works, but basically, <clears throat> the whole thing that dial moves makes a whole, you know. 24 yeah, 12 a whole 360 turn yep so it's it's crazy i think like so the dial and the subdials they they all rotate uh it's you, you'll have to to watch to watch a youtube video of, of how you know of it in movement but it's i mean this is it's just an amazing watch and it's oil filled so that there's uh so that's supposed to cut down on the distortion from the uh uh the sapphire but the the only downside I would say is just kind of when you have to send it off for service, I believe it has oh. to to go, go back to Switzerland. Yeah, no, which is a, which is a pain in the ass. Yeah, that yeah. and it's actually from from what I heard, service actually really isn't that bad. I heard service is it's only six hundred dollars. You know, for for the time being, if if this brand catches on more, uh, and then later on, you know, they they might turn service into a profit center, and then you might be looking at like you know a thousand plus for for service. But, what if, but if, you, if you're getting in, yeah, that, that is that is also true. Uh, but you know, I I think right now there is enough interest in the brand to keep them afloat. But you know, also so if you're the type of person that that's looking for this type of watch, that's looking at this type of watch, you know, like you you might not necessarily be too concerned with the service, and you just might be thinking about like you know just enjoying it the watch uh, in, in the yeah. moment. Completely. Listen. To me, this to me is, to me, this is innovation. This, is, when I think of modern, you know, sub, something of today's age, like this is the, mo the model. This is like what, you know, when I was talking about like things of their time, I mean, this is what Moser should be doing, something like this. This is real innovation. I mean, this is avant-garde. I mean, like, you know, so this is, I, I, I think this could be, I think this could have upside potential, like, uh, resins because these guys are doing something really unique now th you know this guy fp journe what those guys are basically again they're just the fp journes all those guys the mosers they're just you know refining the wheel they're just you know adding their thing to it these guys are in a whole new like uh, something beyond the wheel, you know. I don't know. There could be something beyond the wheel. I don't know what it is, but yeah. something. Uh, it, it's like they're taking, they're doing something so far out there, uh, and, and they deserve a lot of credit. And you know, I don't want to sound like a, a a simp, but if you're, you know, somebody who's really into watches, they should be supporting these in, real independent brands that are doing real innovation, like these guys. Yeah, not the eight closers, not FP Jorns, you know, this bullshit. These guys are doing something unique. Look at the look at the way you adjust the time. You pop this thing up a little bit, and you're like a, uh, and you turn. It's so cool. I mean, this yeah. is this watch was probably so, never worn. I I would say the same type of person that would buy this watch would probably also be looking at like something like the Ulysse Nardine Freak. Uh, you know what? I think this is more advanced. I mean, like I think this is like if I were to choose between the two. I would go with this. 
yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I like this watch much better than the, uh, the, the freak. I mean, this is like, it's so far out there. Again, this is a watch. You will never see another person wearing this watch. Look at the beautiful, look at this. Wow. How do you, wait, how do you do this close up? How do you do this close up thing here? Uh, wait, uh, how do you do the close? I don't know, but okay, there we go. Uh, okay. Th look at this. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Now, apparently, like, I think you have to be careful in certain weather because it's oil in the, you know, I don't know, it might freeze. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know, it's, 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 it's like, a, it's a crazy watch. This watch, this watch is like buying a Ferrari in, uh, you know, 1968 in America, right? Like nobody was buying Ferraris in 1968, like, or whatever. Like there was like one guy importing them into the US and if you had the, like people thought it was weird it was crazy you know or even Porsche you know the 50s that's like what uh what's his name James Dean you know James Dean he had one of the first Porsches the one that he crashed this is what this is I mean this is like I mean like uh this is the type of watch if you're like a tech guy if you're like that is the watch you should be wearing like that watch if you're working at Google or something that's the watch yeah, but first goal. Yeah, for ten grand, I don't think you you can lose money on this on this resins. I mean, that's I think that's sound money. Ten grand or eleven grand, basically yeah. with yeah premium zodiac. Uh, hey, so hey, hey, Colonel, I I gotta I gotta hop off. Okay, okay. Thank you for joining us. I'll, I'll yeah, keep going here. Thank you for joining us. All right, thanks for having me on. Bye, bye. Okay. Uh, Okay, let's continue here. Let's continue uh, with roll. Okay, so we got some basic stuff here that these guys have had. Let's let's see if we can find some interesting deals. Okay, you got the Vashron overseas dual time that they had. Great watch. And what did this sell for? Thirty grand. Uh, what do they go for in the second? They're pretty much in line with the secondary market, right? This is again, this is a dual time, exactly like the JLC. Let's see what do they have on the rubber strap. And this is such a cool watch. Wow. Great watch. Uh, I would put that on. A, I think I think they make a white rubber strap for this. And this is a double fold deployant. Great watch. I'm, I'm actually, you know, I'm actually intrigued by this. What? So it's sold at the low of the range. <clears throat> let me see this. Let me see. Let me take a look at something here. Let me let me take a look. Uh, let me see. What are these going for? What are these going for? Uh, hang on a second. Let me let me pop back in. One second. Let me pop this in. What are these selling for on Chrono? Let's take a look. Uh, low to high. Okay. Wow. Is a good deal. I'm not familiar with. It. So these are going for on Chrono at the low end. 40 grand, 40 grand in chrono, basically. 40 grand. So somebody got a really good deal here. Somebody got a really good deal. 30,000. Okay, so this, this is an example of, you know, a good deal at auction. So look at this. They had this priced, they had a priced 30 to 40. Basically, forty. If somebody would pay forty, that would have been you know right at retail, and this sold below retail. To me, this it looks like a mint watch. Look at this mint watch, mint, mint condition, minty, minty, minty. Uh, let me see here. Okay, wait. Let's pop in here. You're getting everything. You're getting full box set, everything. Is there a hang tag? <laughs> yeah, look at this. Oh, oh, and the leather. Yeah, that's right. The leather, everything. Look at oh, the hang tag. You got the hang tag. Double hang tags. So the only thing is that see, look at this. Look how, how much the thing flares out. If you got a small wrist, I don't think you, I, I couldn't wear this watch. It's so I think it's like a 42 millimeter. What is this? 41 millimeter, a 41 millimeter watch, huge watch. 
somebody got a great deal on that watch. So that's that's the benefit of auction. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. Let's keep going and we'll wrap up. We'll come back later. By the way, guys, if you are watching, if you're just coming in, let me just add. Let me just add this. Uh, hang on a second. Let me just add something here. By the way, guys, if you're just joining, make sure you click the, the, the link in the video description below to get our free weekly email newsletter, which has all the watch market news, previews, results, latest prices, special deals. That's right. We've got special deals. We curate. We look through the market to find the best deals on Audemars Piguet, Rolex, Patek Philippe, and other top brands. Make sure you click the uh the link to get our free email newsletter hit that like button um hang on a second okay let's go here craig craig you know we have to we're trying to keep this a family friendly show you know for the sponsors <coughs> i can't bring up your comment sadly you gotta you know you gotta uh, try to make it more politically correct Try to make your comment more politically correct. We're trying to get the big sponsors, the big, you know, Procter & Gamble, Coke, Bud Light. Those are the people we need to get a sponsor. So we can't have politically incorrect language here. Now, oh, look at this, another resins. Now, this is a different one. Okay, this is Type 5B. Okay, I'm not familiar with all their models. So this is titanium. Wow. Crazy watch. Again, full box set, everything. Oh, you know what? Let's take a look. How much does this sell for? Hang on. On Chrono, let's compare. Shop and compare. I don't know what this goes for. Uh, so there's one listed for 28 grand. So yeah, uh, there you go. You can get some good deals. Basically, you would have saved 10 grand. And again, mint, full set, right? Uh, Gronfeld, again, one of these independent brands. I don't know anything about them. Um, you know, I don't know. I'd rather get to the resins. If you're going to go for this crazy look, I'd rather get a resins. I mean, again, if you're going to go for something wacky, I'd rather go for uh, the best of breed. The best of breed, in my opinion, is resins. Uh, hang on a second. That's right. Hit that like button. Uh, Craig, by the way, yellow gold. I mean, listen, <clears throat> with, in, in regarding your, your, your sentiment, I think uh, if it was a full bracelet, yellow gold, yes. I'm into white gold uh, for some of those reasons. I would get, if I'm going for, if I had to have a full gold bracelet, I would go with white gold. But if it's the head only, if I'm on a strap, Yellow gold is fine. It looks amazing. Um, you know, my day date is on a strap. You know, um, again, it, uh, this watch, the Vacheron, on a strap, yellow gold, amazing. Hang on, let's 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 keep going here. Let's keep going, and then we'll wrap up. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up in just a minute. Let's look at one of, one or two more things here. What do these guys have? Uh, oh, that is Hermes Hodinky. Who, the, who would buy this piece of shit? I think a Hodinky watch is something that anything with Hodinky, I think, is a negative. It's actually a negative. Um, okay, let's go. Wow. Look at this. Vacheron chronograph. Uh, I think this is the same movement as that Blanc Pong we saw. It's probably a JLC movement. Are they using a JLC movement? I don't know. It looks to me like an exactly the same movement. The setup is exactly the same. I mean, it looks like exactly, this looks exactly like that Blanc Pan. Not as refined, though. Not as refined. But how much did this go for? Six grand. That's a deal. 
at the bottom of the range. That's right, the bottom of the range. Basically, it's sold for below below the estimate. Um, comes with the buckle. Okay, so you got to get rid of this bracelet, the strap. Get rid of the strap. Great watch. I think it's a good deal. I mean, you know, again, I'm not a Vacheron guy, whatever, but it's uh, actually. Let me see. Hang on a second. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at something here. Let's take a look. Are there any on Chrono? What are they going for? Wait. There aren't any. Wait. Twenty results. Let's take a look. Let's see. Low to high. Uh, yeah. Let me see. Do, do we see any exact comps? Any exact comps? No. So yeah, somebody got a good deal. That watch really. Um, yeah, somebody got a pretty good deal on that watch. Good deal. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting. Uh, okay, so I got I have the Blue Z, aka the King Tut. Yeah, it does. It, it is. It is. You know that watch does have a stigma. It's kind of like the car salesman's watch. It is. Uh, I'm actually. Uh, well, that's one of the reasons I want to get her. It's too. Look, it's a victim of its own success. The Rolex Submariner King Tut, the Blue Z, is a victim of its own success. I mean, it's a beautiful watch, but it's a victim of its own success. You know, um, I'm actually looking to to get a gold submariner but the head only head only i like head head only no i don't want that gold uh, bracelet that looks tacky no i'm gonna put on a on a either a suede or, or a rubber bespoke strap it's gonna be amazing uh lange i think craig is into lange. Oh, so here we got an early lange an early lange what does this go for 12 grand wow i don't get it I don't get it. Why would somebody buy that piece of shit? Okay. Let's see. What else do we have? Piaget. We know there's a lot of Piaget people. Quartz. Yeah. Quartz. Yeah, but yeah, there is people. It's not a problem for people. There are people who's... Let's take a look. Let's take a look. We'll we'll, we'll look at one more and... Uh... Okay, here we go. <clears throat> okay, so they sold the Nautilus 3800. This is my favorite one. Patek 3800 full gold champagne dial. You know, again, I like the uh, blue dial, two tone, full gold, mint, mint, mint. The estimate was fifty to seventy thousand, full box, papers, and an insurance evaluation. It was owned by uh, George Benson. George Benson. Who is George Benson? Oh, look, that's a white gold clasp. George Benson is a jazz guy, jazz musician. Uh, I actually, I remember him because I, I, I was into jazz. I remember that name. I had no idea the guy was a watch collector. He's had some serious watches. Uh, I bet he picked this up in Switzerland, right? He, I, because these guys, these watch guys, I mean, excuse me, the jazz guys, they tour um, worldwide. They tour worldwide. And a lot of times they might even get paid in watches. Is that him? Give me the night. Oh, yeah. I think he is George Benson one of those like easy listening type of guys that that easy listening jazz stuff like uh what's his name uh Lionel Richie is he like a Lionel Richie type of guy I think I remember George Benson that name from way back easy listening jazz or something uh so this guy I've seen pictures of him because I looked at this guy and and he's had some um watches he's had some serious watches um 3800 he probably wore this only couple i have a feeling he might have gotten this as a gift <clears throat> or he, he may have gotten this as like part payment you know again when these guys tour especially back in the day in europe you know they'd get paid you know whatever you know it's very uh you know these the music business is very uh how shall we say uh you know <laughs> the music business the music business um 
mint, 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 mint condition. Now, hang on a second. What does a mint one go for? A yellow gold 3,800? Curious. Patek. Uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look. See. Hang on, hang on. Let me see. Let me see. Low to high. Let's take a look. What are they going for now? You know, I, I, ironically, I, I saw a 3,800 with these guys, two-tone blue dial, and it was 14 grand. That's right. It was at the, the Keystone in Beverly Hills. I thought, wow, 14 grand. It's on. It's in Beverly Hills. It's probably overpriced. No, no, it was actually fair, fair price, very good price. And you know what? I missed out. That's that's my story. I missed out, and now the watch is forty grand, thirty grand. Let me see. What are these gold ones going for? Full gold. Yeah, somebody got a good deal on that watch. It is basically. Look at this. Yeah, they're really. You know what? Somebody got a very good deal on that watch because they are. Uh, the yellow gold ones are around 80 grand plus. And, you know, look, the George Benson thing does have, you know, it's a nice little celebrity provenance. No, actually, actually I'm sorry. Let me, let me see. The cheapest yellow gold, full yellow gold on Chrono 24, 64.5, but it's, you know, used, beaten up. So yeah, somebody definitely got a good deal on that watch. Uh, mint condition, celebrity provenance. Yeah, the ones uh, on Chrono that are, are in the high 60s or whatever, 70, they, they're all, you know, they've been beaten up. They've been used. Used and abused, no box, no papers. Oh, there he is, George Benson. Okay, so... Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, sixty-eight thousand, sixty-eight thousand, two hundred, including the premium. Sixty-eight thousand two hundred is what it sold for. Commodore. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he uses the Lionel Richie era. Yeah, great deal. I mean, the cheapest ones in Chrono are, you know, let's call it in the '60s, but they're beaten up. They're they're been used and abused. No, no, you know, no box. You're getting like a the stuff on Chrono is like Archie luxury stuff. You know, Archie luxury stuff. You know, chip uh, machete marks, naked. Not this. This has got the celebrity provenance of george benson all right all right watch fans uh listen guys uh thank you for joining make sure you you uh get our weekly newsletter you get our weekly newsletter so that you get uh all the latest stuff it's absolutely free watch market news auction previews results real time real time that's what you get and it's absolutely free for a limited time click the link in the video description below thank you for joining we'll see you all on the next one and by the way tell all your friends about this channel if you like them